Hey everyone, welcome to my Pastor Paul update. I hope you've had a great week. It's getting beautiful outdoors. I've seen a lot of different people go outside. I've been outside. I hope you've had a great week. Speaking about being outside, let me tell you about some of the things that are coming up here at St. Mark's. May 9th, Mother's Day, guys, that's right around the corner. That's when we're going to go outside for worship. Everything's looking great on the berm. The stage is coming up. It's going to be a beautiful time of worship. May 9th, put that in your calendar. We'll be outdoors for worship. Next week, I have a mystery guest uh, on my Pastor Paul update. You are not going to want to miss that. I promise you it's going to be great. So check that out. Finally, I just want to say thank you to all the guests that I've had recently as we've talked about Second Chance Month. And uh, if you haven't seen the interviews, they're fantastic. I've been so impressed uh, by the guests that we've had. And today we have one final guest. His name is Jeff Collins. He's the owner of Donut Land. He's got a great story to share. And we, of course, uh, share about donuts as well. So you're going to want to watch this. Thanks for watching all these Second Chance Month interviews. Uh, if you haven't seen them all, go back and check them out. I hope you're having a great week. God blessings on your weekend as you connect faith and life. Hey everyone, I'm here with Jeff Collins. He is the owner of Donut Land. We're so thankful to have you here. Thank Honored you. to have you here. We have some of your donuts that I want everybody to know actually was on the house. I went <laughs> down to Donut Land to pick them up and I says, Jeff here. And he didn't know me at all, but uh, he gave me free donuts. I'm not saying that's what's going to happen for everybody who goes to Donut Land. That's true. We'll do our best. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks so much for, for joining yeah. me. We're talking about Second Chance Month, mm -hmm. and we'll get into that a little bit. But before we go there, you want to just share a little bit about the history of Donut Land? Yeah. Um, I've known Donut Land personally. My wife was born and raised in Cedar Rapids, so it's been... 27 years that I've been familiar with Donut Land and my grandparents actually grew up uh, whenever I'd go see my grandparents specifically Grandma Charlotte they'd always have fresh donuts so I had an affinity for donuts my entire life so I, as I've traveled the country I've been to every donut shop I think in the United States it feels like but um, Donut Land was always my favorite um, they were kind of born back in the early 70s actually the first store was in Rockford Illinois um, no and they were up to 61 stores at some point. People are shocked oh, wow. when they hear 61 donut lands. And they were scattered throughout Wisconsin and Illinois and Iowa, even down to Georgia, they had a few. Wow. Um, Vicki, who I bought the store from a few years ago, was one of the original owners. And then she sold, ironically, to a businessman out of Chicago um, that started franchising and um, growing the business. But it just grew... I think it just grew out of control and they just had, they didn't have a great strategy in place with who they franchised to and they lost control on a, on a few important things that's important to a business. Mm -hmm. um, and then it all just kind of collapsed on itself in the early 80s. Um, Vicki had a few stores then over time through the challenges of running a business and as she grew older, um, it whittled down to the one and only Donut Land. So I was fortunate enough to strike up a relationship with her about 11 years ago with the goal of always having a donut shop. And um, when she was ready to step aside, it worked out good for me about, it'll be three years in September, so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So big business, actually small business, big business, down to one store, and now we're yeah. trying to go the other way, so. That's great, yeah, because yeah. you're trying, you're thinking about or in the plans to add mm -hmm. another donut land, where at? Yeah, it's, it hasn't been officially announced yet, so you oh. guys will be the first to hear. No, it's all good. It's <laughs> Word has gotten out. It's amazing. We have customers coming in. They're like, hey, we heard you're opening up on the southwest side. So <laughs> there's an old donut land on Williams Boulevard. Um, it, it actually looks, it looks exactly like our building now, and we've even painted the roof orange. And we're a few months out with uh, the pandemic and uh, the issues with the Direco, it's it's caused a few delays for us, yeah. but um, we have our challenges here at Center Point. So we're probably two, three months away from what we'll call store number two. Um, we'd love to get to, uh, our goal within the next few years is to get somewhere in the three to five store range if everything falls into place. So we're That's we're great. tracking that way. That's great. Yep. That's awesome. Well, we we uh, we love your donuts on Sunday mornings here. Yeah, thank and you. Yeah. So, of course, the pandemic hit, and we all just kind of stopped gathering together. And we're, we're back gathering together, but we've been pretty conscientious about 
uh, having fellowship time together, but we're, we're going to be opening that up here soon. Good. We'll be and ready. So the donuts will be coming <laughs> back. And I have to tell you, my favorite Sunday mornings are when Jason Christensen, our director of worship, comes in the door and he's got a box of Donut Land donuts. <laughs> he always asks me, I feel like he's maybe, you know, brown nosing a little bit, but he's like, yeah. would you like a, pa- a donut, Pastor? Yeah, sure, those, okay. are, those are good days. Those are good days. Um, all right, so we're talking about Second Chance Month, and I know that that you at Donut Land have hired folks that have come mm-hmm. out of prison. Um, tell us about why why you do that. Yeah, you know, as as I when I first took over the business, the biggest challenge we have, uh, and probably any business, is staffing. Is what I call HR, human resources. Um, it's it's really hard to find a really strong and and reliable and very consistent staff so from the outset i was interviewing uh new people luckily i've got a few people that have been around for a long time but with the turnover rates you know we're we're always looking for really strong people and as i had people come in um and interview i was i was amazed at how many um were at the point of what i'll call no return it's like I can't get a job. I, I'll give me any opportunity if it's washing dishes or scrubbing floors or making donuts or working behind the counter. I would love it. And, you know, and we just had a chance to, as I sit and talk to them and learn more about their backgrounds, um, a lot of them had issues in the past, significant issues, um, you know, with records, incarceration, you know, whatever that is. And uh, they were desperate. Um, they couldn't pay bills. You know, they were living basically wherever they could. Um, so and we had the mentality from the start. We just didn't want to sell donuts, but we wanted to to try to help people um, at the same time. Um, so we we started hiring two, three. Started off at that. They're still there and doing a fantastic job. And um, I think they appreciated the opportunity more than anything. And uh, they do a great job. I mean, we still have uh, some challenges that we face, but overall. Um, the feedback we've gotten and the um, the results we've been able to achieve with our staff has been has been fabulous. So we're, we we feel our, we're, we feel very fortunate. It's like a I don't want to call it a secret, but it's like we have something that's working for us, and um, we're going to continue to build on that. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. When I talk to different uh, leaders and different organizations that work with uh, citizens who are returning. Uh, from in, incarceration, one of the biggest things always is is how, how do I make money, right? Mm-hmm. How do I provide for myself and a lot of times family? Yeah, and so I think that's great. Oh, it's it's amazing, and I've learned so much. And well, I've always been, you know, I've worked hard and um, been fortunate in my life with a great background and a great family. Right. So as I've learned more about a few of the employees that we have, just the challenges that they faced, if it was from a young age. You know, to a couple of mistakes they may have made along the way, um, but just the sheer challenges they have. What we take for granted with cell phones, um, they may not even have one, um, or if they do, they're really on a, a pay-as-you-go kind of sure. plan. I yeah. mean, I, I feel when I see it, I'm just like, wow! It's, you take these things for granted. Yeah, they're going to food banks. They get all their food from uh, the local food banks. Yeah. Um, there, there's just so many different things. I'm like. Um, so it's like, how can we help? Yeah, we expect them to come and work hard and, and show up and do what they're supposed to do. But um, we preach opportunity and, um, you know, a lot of them have taken advantage of it. So, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. that's awesome. Well, your daughter, Jane, yep. uh, is involved in prison fellowship. And Jane, if you're watching this, I received your email this week. I haven't <laughs> replied back. I'm sorry, uh, but I will, I will get to your email. Yeah. But uh, so she's working with Prison Fellowship, who puts on Second Chance mm-hmm. Month. She's going to be speaking here this this Sunday at yep. our prayer walk. Awesome. How, did, how did how did she influence you with with this passion of hers? And also, how did she end up at Prison Fellowship? And it's, I call it exceptional parenting. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. That's, what that's I good to say, right? Um, you know, Jane. It's it's fine. Jane was really athletic growing up, and it's you know, she went to school uh, out at Nebraska. Uh, I don't know if she's told you her whole background, but one of her summer jobs was working at the men's um, penitentiary there in Lincoln. Oh, no kidding. Yeah, so she went through the whole training process as, what a guard. And if you look at Jane, you'd be like, that's going to be challenging for her. Sure. To go into that field at that level of of a a facility, 
Yeah. Um, I was sometimes like, well, you sure what you're getting yourself into, Jane? But <laughs> she went all in. She passed that. And she always had an affinity for helping people, too. Um, and she kind of gravitated towards, you know, people that have been incarcerated and how does she help them with the rest of their life. Um, so and then it worked out very well for her, you know, through the course of her employment and, and hooking on with prison fellowship. And she absolutely loves it. It's you can see the passion in her eyes when she talks about it. So she's been able to share a lot of stories with me. And as ironic as, as we were hiring people with backgrounds like that, how it all kind of came together. So now yeah. it's like, how do we how do we continue to build on that? So yeah, mm -hmm. well, that's pretty neat. Mm -hmm. and so it's a it's kind of a family thing. Yeah, which yeah. is really which is yeah. really cool. We our our youngest daughter has Down syndrome. Um, Kathleen, she's our special one. So it's uh, I think maybe she kind of picked up a lot of that along the way. It's like how do I help people kind of yeah. mentality. So yeah. it, it's been really good. So I think that was a big piece of it on um, kind of the direction that she wanted to go. So it's really cool. Yeah. yeah. Well, we need more people in the world yeah. like like your daughter yeah, and, you. and yourself. So. Uh, so second chance month, that's what we've been focusing on this month. And then um, just some final questions yeah. about donuts. Oh, sure. Here, here we go. Um, what's your favorite donut? My favorite growing up um, and always has been is the vanilla old fashioned. So it's uh, a little special. It's a special. Do People always ask me, like, what's so special about it? It's got the little crinkled edges and it's mm. got a little, I want to call it a heavier feel to it and yeah. taste, but yeah. I love those. I could... That's my weakness. I mean, I've grown into sprinkles and actually our chocolate chip donut. Not yes, to, we've to got a couple back there. person here is yes. a hidden gem for us too. So yeah. you know. <laughs> my, my favorite, uh, and I think it's just amazing. I love the flavor of it and the texture of it. Everything about it is your, is it your orange crunch? Yeah. Is that what it's called? Mm-hmm. Mm. We've kind of built on the orange is one of the, it tastes like a Fruit Loop. And then we've got the orange Dreamsicle now with the white frosting, oh, no uh, kidding. which is really good. Yeah, kind of a new. <laughs> Going to have to go out and get some yeah, uh, yeah. of those. All right. Um, what donut do you sell the most of? Cherry. Cherry, no kidding. Yeah, it's, um, yeah cherry is by far our number one seller, cherry and blueberry. But for some reason, cherry and donut land go together. You, if you travel country and check out other donut stores, you really don't bump into any cherry. Sure. So we're trying to figure out how do we kind of build on the, the cherry theme at donut land, like home of the cherry donut, the best cherry donut ever, whatever that is. Nice. But uh, cherry nice. is, and people get mad if they come in and we're out of cherry. So we try to always make plenty of cherry donuts. So wow, <laughs> all right, yeah. all right. Well, and everybody, you should see this is this is a 15 pack because Donut Land's donuts are so awesome that uh, you need 15 of them mm -hmm. and not just a dozen. That's pretty. <laughs> that's pretty. That's pretty fun. And then the other thing I learned from Jeff here uh, off camera is that you can kind of, You talked about bagging them up yep. and freezing them. Yep. And you said so two donuts to like a baggie mm -hmm. and they just turn out really, really well. Pop yep. them in the microwave Pop 10 the microwave. seconds. Yeah, if you're traveling out of town or doing whatever, you can freeze them or literally it's like 10 seconds and they taste as, as good as the day they yeah. were made. Yeah, well, that's awesome. Well, we really appreciate you being oh, here. Oh, thank you, yeah. Uh, love the fact that uh, of what you're doing at Donut Land, not only running a business, but then you know wanting to help people, mm -hmm. which is fantastic. And then Jane, uh, she's doing a great job at, at Prison Fellowship. Oh, so. thank you. Now, we're, we're working hard and we appreciate it. So okay. thanks. Again, thanks for joining. Mm -hmm. Everybody, thanks for watching today. God bless you as you connect faith to life.